I don't, I don't think I can stress just how excited I am to watch this game just because uh, my boy Sexy Bamble is playing. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team back. Clockwork. Nope, not at all. Way too early in the morning for me. I've been missing it just because I, I can't I can't wake up that early. Fair enough. I also worth noting I just muted myself on the uh, thing accidentally, so that's not great, but it's happening. Um, so now they're finally hearing my voice. Uh, but Aosin, it's a Jakiro clockwork opening for Hellraisers. Is Bambo a clockwork player? That he is. Any hero that can jump into a fight, initiate, you know, get themselves killed really quickly, that that's him. Awesome. <laughs> I am going to try and not laugh today. I'm going to try and just keep myself uh, calm because whenever I laugh or like get too excited, I start hacking up a lung violently uh, into the microphone. So the only person that should be able to hear me cough today is going to be Steven. I'm going to mute myself on X split all other times. Um, but yeah, the other side of it, Earthshaker and a Silencer. Uh, a great initiation combo. They could think about going back for like a Bat Rider or something as well if they wanted to. Yeah, definitely viable. Silencer, Bad Rider, the one of the uh, older combos, and the one of the better initiating combos, in my opinion. So we'll see if they go for that. It's I don't I don't know too much about Penta. Do they play this Shaker as offlane or do they play it as a support? I, I'm gonna have to assume support because I think offlane Earthshaker is not much of a thing anymore. Yeah, DNZ plays it a lot, and he tends to play support role. Uh, that's what we saw earlier today, at least, but I'm sure they can switch it up a lot. And the hero that was all over the place the past two series, it's going to be the Life Stealer. I, I can't lie to you. I really don't like the hero that much. I feel like he always gets kited and runs into issues, but uh, maybe he's still good. I, I'm not sure. How do you feel about Life Stealer right now? Ten seconds. Remaining. I think he's a solid pick, as long as you have an idea of what to do with him. Right. And, I mean, if you think about how he functions against these heroes, I think he's really good against Clockwork, just because uh, you don't have to deal with the battery assault. You do run into the issue of getting cogged in, though, so that is a worry. But, you know, as long as you have a vehicle to transport you around, then, you know, ideally you want to kill them before they even get to do anything, and you got a silencer to make that happen. Most definitely. It's a great initiation. Makes you look even better. The Bat Rider pick for Penta. But it's going to be a Magnus for Hellraisers. So either a Kaiser Magnus, which doesn't... Eh, maybe you could go for that. I doubt it. But more likely a Bambo Magnus, I would imagine. Ten seconds remaining. I think that would be the case here. More more likely than not. Five seconds remaining. going to be wondering. I'm kind of curious as to what they're going to pair up with it, though. I feel like Ursa is a really good pick here. Mm. To pair up with the Magnus. That could be kind of cool. Uh, it always helps to accelerate that farm for the hero that sometimes runs into those issues. Uh, then you don't have to like solely rely upon Roches to give you that acceleration and a ton of kills. Turn to pick. They're going to go for the Centaur. Okay. Boogie Centaur. You know, the thing is, I was watching the, the Captain's Draft. Or, or I was casting some of it. Mm -hmm. And... It's so different coming back to a captain's mode game. Yeah. Because the captain's draft only had like 27 heroes in, in the pool. Hey, you get a bunch of weird picks there. I mean, Centaur, it still to me sometimes feels like a weird pick, but we've been seeing it more often. Uh, the hero runs into a lot of issues in the laning stage, but I guess with likely a Clockwork and Jakiro uh, dual support combo, does that deal with him very well? I guess it depends on the safe lane hero. Uh, it, it kind of depends. Like like you said, right now Centaur is somewhat vulnerable. Um, if I had to make a guess, I would think that they're going to try to match him up against the Magnus one-on-one, -on -one, most likely. That'd be kind of cool. I could dig that. Yeah, because I mean, you have Earthshaker, Silencer, and Lifestealer. It's, it's not, you know, super strong, but it's not weak either. So you can kind of have that matchup go up against whatever they throw at you and then make sure your Centaur has... Somewhat of a decent time when he's up or against the the Magnus. Yeah. Well, and obviously Magnus loves to be able to be in those one on one matchups, get a little bit more value out of the uh, cleave mechanic from his empower. Um, that one got pushed all the way back to the 
what is it level 25 where he gets the amp on it instead of the level 15 or whatever it was before they're gonna go for the classic pa all right i like the pa i mean the thing is we still don't even know if it's an offlane magnus that's that's the thing yeah because uh i think it's immortals that plays it uh, plays a jakiro in the offlane so there could be a jakiro offlane and then a magnus mid and then all of a sudden your jakiro versus a centaur for example is is just a a terrible matchup for the centaur i believe right yeah it's a ton of damage over time and you don't want to have to like go into a first item cloak or something like that that sounds terrible um but pa you mentioned it very strong uh with a magnus there are blade mail carriers or at least the centaur could be a blade mail carrier but maybe you just don't focus him down um anything else that's really standing out in this draft it's just a lot of physical damage from both teams uh, Penta is more kind of like all in on the life stealer right now. Uh, you have the Earthshaker burst as well as the, you know, the life stealer infest combo burst. But other than that, you know, everything is kind of gradual. Centaur double edge is kind of a burst, but in the long run, you know, it's it's not like extreme amounts of damage. Raises, turn uh, they do still have one more mid pick though, so that's kind of where they fill out that area. Definitely want some some AOE damage for this to round off this lineup. I should also mention that this is the final match for the phase one of the EU qualifiers for the summit eight. So the winner of this is going to move on to phase two, where they're going to face off against Mouse Sports, uh, and then that would give them a berth into the grand finals, uh, where they just have to win one best of five to take it all the way to the end. So a lot on the line here. Uh, potentially just two best of threes and a best of five away from being at a big event. And well, the final pick for Hellraisers is going to be the Visage. Oh, I don't know how good this is, but I think Ember is actually pretty good here. Okay. I just like the Ember because it's a way for them to deal with... Ten seconds. Remaining. Sort of deal with a PA. You know, he's like... Well, I think he's the only hero that has true strike. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, PA can sometimes sort of run into that issue, and they're going to go for the DP and sets. Just send the ghosts at them. Spooky, spooky ghosts. All right, I, I definitely like this pickup. Uh, actually, I, I, I'm pretty sure Death Prophet is much better than the Ember Spirit. I don't think the Ember Spirit just has a has a very good time against some of these heroes. The PA as well as the Visage just kind of do too much damage to him because he doesn't have much armor in the early game. Yeah, that's going to be a life stealer for Oliver. Uh, something that Trent was telling me about this guy is that whenever he gets a chance to, he wants to build Radiance and. Whatever hero it's on. Earlier he's playing the Abaddon, then he played the Life Stealer. Every time picking up a Radiance, so that might be something to watch out for in this game. As we hop into I mean, this, Radiance is OP, so I'm I'm on board. Why is it OP? Are you are you just you you, you you're talking madness right now, or you really think it's that good? I, I, just, I just think the item owns. <laughs> okay, it's just like it's like the easy mode build. You know, if you pit, manage to finish the Radiance, your life just becomes so much easier. You know, you just gotta. If you're mispositioned, as long as you survive, you do you contribute to the team fight. Uh, yeah. If you have a radiance, you also just farm that much faster because you know you don't have to really plan out your routes, right? You just kind of run all over the place wherever there, you see a creep. You just run there and you clear it out very quickly. So, radiance is kind of like that that easy mode core item. This is how I interpret it or feel feel like it. It kind of works out. Okay. Well, I can dig it. We're having a little bit of a pause as the lovely Dota Two logo is going to come under view and well there's another pause uh so teams the way that you're seeing this is there one that you kind of like a little bit more or anything that you feel like either draft is super dependent upon uh i think like the hellraiser one is kind of harder to execute but it's not like super all in on a magnus rp right, right? you have uh some decent setup here and there you got a jakiro to set up potentially you got a clockwork to set up potentially and off of any of those, you know, that could be an RP follow-up or RP could be initiated with. And then you have the bird stun. So, you know, they have a lot of avenues to, to get things started. But the most important thing is they're up against the silencer. So I think that the Penta side have an easier time when it comes to execution. You know, you have the hit one button and go type of lineup. You got this, the uh, Stampede as well as the Exorcism. So, oh, as well as a Global. So, mm. Oh, you see this? Kaiser was the one that bought the smoke. What a the mid player buying a smoke. 
Look, sometimes you just don't have enough money for everything. Yeah. Milan, he needs his boots, his tangos, a little bit of a clarity along the way. Jakiro had to pick up everything. Jakiro actually had enough money for a smoke, so they're making sure that J4 is going to be able to start to get towards his boots eventually. And Hellraiser's looking to find a pickoff. Oh, they might be successful in this. Still half the duration left on smoke. Oh, RMN. Ah, uh, him getting found oh, at the beginning is not the worst. This, this is a perfect spot. Yeah, and they're walking out. Really good play there by RMN. And that's going to keep them alive, it looks like. Milan does have boots, but it's a little bit too scary to chase forward for that. So they'll be able to secure themselves two runes. While likewise, on the other side, Penta going to be able to pick up the other one. Maybe even if you're Oliver, you think about... Because they're are, are they going to fully commit to this like aggro lane up here? Do you think? Uh, or what's happening? DP safe lane, lifestealer mid? Looks like it's lifestealer mid. Okay. Well, the thing is, they, they expect it to be a PA mid, right? Yeah. So he's... Like, I mean, look at his build. He's He's prepared for it. Whoa, they're swapping it now. So Kaiser's going up top. They're going to have the Visage in the mid lane against the Lifestealer. And then it's RMN and Nine down bottom. Huh, I don't... Interesting lane setup. Yeah, I don't know who this favors. Lifestealer came to lane with a wand, so he was expecting the PA. And that is not going to be the case. Meanwhile, DNZ, he's going to need to pick up a wand as soon as possible. Or rather, the, the centaur is eventually. He's just trying to mess with Kaiser right now. <laughs> There's so much clowny stuff going on right now. I'm just like looking at every single lane and every lane has already been completely disrupted. Like look at this, look at look at the off lane for, for Hellraisers. <laughs> There's a silencer behind the tier one just trying to harass him. <laughs> yeah. Bambo's taking like, uh, he has skewer level one. So his like farming speed isn't actually that intense and now like the creeps are running back and forth they don't know where they're going they're starting to hit the tower um okay i guess if it works what are man gotta be careful he's gonna take oh no he's not taking any tower shots he's fine no well am i missing anything else in the other lanes like what else is how, how does this look to you how do you feel like the visage versus lifestealer matchup is gonna be as Milan going after him. He doesn't have rage. Oh, Oliver. He is almost going to go down, but lives through it. That was really close. I think this matchup is actually pretty hard for Lifestealer. I think even if you have... Uh, the, well, the thing is, it's it's not like... I guess it's not hard. It's just that nothing will really ever happen. Because the only way they can kill him is if he doesn't have rage. And right now, he, while he doesn't have he's going to have it now. And any opportunity... Uh, that they might have is probably not going to come. Okay. That's kind of a, a slow lane. Maybe a haste and they can do something with it. DNZ looking to try and block him off. They get the open wounds. There's the fissure. They're bringing in heroes to try and save him. But 3-3, three, three, gonna die. And, oh, the silencer didn't stick around to get the end. All right, right, at, right as I say that, the haste rune as well as a perfect fissure block. That, that's how you get things done. Good decision by the life store to open wounds as well before, uh, so that way the Earthshaker can get into position to block that off. God, this is so annoying though, the grave chill for the attack speed slow and it's harder to last hit. Yeah, it's kind of like fighting up against a Tinker, I guess. It's not as bad, as, I don't actually know if it's as bad as, uh, as Laser though. I mean, it's pretty hard to, to go for it, like, just because your animation is so clunky at that point. Um, we should also keep our eye on Boogie. He's brought down fairly low, but does already have his Tranquil Boots. Milan, he's going to move in now, or at least think about it. Boogie, walk over into the trees, so it's a little bit tough. He doesn't have a wand still, but they won't be able to make anything happen. Just going to wait for the rune. Yeah, I think they wanted to go for that, but decided against it because there wasn't enough uh, creeps on their side, and he is holding on to a fairy fire, so it's a little difficult. Is 3 3 block though. off again? I mean, they're making it work. This is not what we would have expected, but 
Three, three. Dropping low. Is he going to die? Needs another hit, but... Oh, the juke! He went over there, and Bambo skewers him away. Well played. DNZ trying to finish off. 3-3. Three, three. The punch is going to be there. Now Oliver raging, trying to make his way out of the cogs, and they are going to make it happen. So Penta escape again with a kill on the mid-visage. What a disaster. I wonder if the visage actually needed to die there. I felt like he had a, an opportunity to make it out, but I, I could be wrong. Oh. So I think that the tree might have blocked him. Oh, Boogie. Yeah, he, uh, I thought he was going to get away, but the clockwork came in and just punched him in the face. It was a good fissure block off attempt, but it didn't end up happening. There being enough, rather. That was almost a sick juke by 33, though. Yeah. <laughs> just walking up the hill and walking back down. Oldest trick in the book. Oh, Bambo holding on to his skewer there. Not wanting to use it for nothing. And in the meantime, it's been an Earthshaker who's picked up full round of Arcane Boots and looking to see if he can block off 3-3 again in the mid. But not quite there. Rage, turning, trying to fight. Milan's there as well. And even with the silencer, they don't feel comfortable diving for it. They're putting so much pressure on this, on this Visage. I wonder if this is the right play. I don't know how powerful a Visage gets when he's kind of like uncontested. So I'm kind of curious to see. I mean, what what are they losing out on by doing this? Uh, I mean, this PA is going to get a lot for for starters, and Babo is going to also get a decent amount. Like it's it's not easy for him, but it's it's decent. Okay. Of course, as I say that, he's getting less than Boogie is. Yeah, Boogie's still been able to stay fairly survivable in here. Only dying one time, the Centaur. So, any stacks that have been started to build? Oh, man, the Ancients have been stacked up. They're going to be able to get a stack on the Medium Camp as well. So, there'll be some farm for the PA to get back to later. That is going to be a quite a while before they go for that, but at the same time, Penta don't really have any any way to clear it either, so they're kind of safe on that for now. 3-3 oh, three, three here again. Going to deal some damage to Oliver, who's just going to rage and run away. But the rotation's in from mid, or towards mid, rather. Oh, look, he's got a queued up. Who does? Oliver. <laughs> I told you, man. This is what he wants to do. It's his play. I mean, he's against a PA, right? Yeah. You can't hit her when she's blurred, so you might as well get Radiance. Yeah. Got him. Uh, J4, he's moving down towards the bottom lane. Wants to stack as he goes. Bambo running through the woods. Nine is going to find him. Doesn't have a point to silence, but well, with the Fissure, there's the block off. And this could be Bambo going down. Just going to TP away. Good recognition by him. Oh, yeah. mid lane. Can they get Oliver? Oh, I think he got him this time around. Nice play there with the Cogs block off. And, well, level six birds. Still uh, pretty good. I actually really dislike the new Visage. I'm really surprised that people people um, kind of value this, this pick still. I feel like his burst potential has just gone out the window. He does so little damage. Is it just, uh, what, what is it about them that's sort of lost their value? Well, the old birds, right? Uh, you basically have 10 damage, which is nothing. But the first couple of hits, like, I think for the level 1 birds, you get plus 60. Okay. For your very first hit, and then every hit kind of de uh, decreases by about 7, I think. Uh -huh. And then it goes down by, like, it keeps going down until it runs out of charges or something like that. Okay. And then now it's just straight up 30 damage, which is less than half of what the initial hit would have been originally. Yeah. So the burst potential is not pretty much non-existent. I guess it's more consistent damage, but less potential to like blow somebody up right at the start. I, th I think it needs to be buffed, in my opinion, though. It's it's a little too weak. I think it, the reason why they did it is because of the most likely to balance out the, the new level 25 talent. Okay. Because uh, if it was the old one and you had Agnum Scepter as well as the new talent, 
yeah. and you would have four birds with immense burst potential. Yeah, yeah. I think it might have been a little too OP because it would have done enough damage, or it might have done enough damage to where you could basically backdoor towers without uh, worrying too much. Right. I guess and there's then, there's probably a, a point where like the damage is more per second, but it just comes later because you don't have to drop them and re redo the charges. I don't know. Uh, there's some math in there though, I'm sure. I I was trying to like work work around it, and I was wondering what it might have been better at. And I think like at level one, it does it actually just, like just straight up farm slower still. Okay. Um, it might change if you hit level two familiars, but uh, until then, I feel like this is just super, like way inferior to what it used to be. Okay. Well, this has sort of been the tendency for uh, for Penta here, is they have kind of like the 3.5 and 3.5 instead of a 3 and a 4, with Earthshaker and Centaur both getting a lot at this point. And Earthshaker, like we said, he already had the Arcane Runes, and now is about a quarter of the way towards his Blink Dagger as well. But no real towers have been taken in this game. It's been a very passive farming thing. Is there, is there a team that you feel like this favors more than the other? I feel like Penta kind of do better with having a lot of free farm at this stage of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I think Hellraisers needs a lot more items to get to get going. Uh, you you need you basically need all the setup items and then the items for PA to survive in team fights. Like yeah. damage is not going to be an issue, but initiation and control in team fights is going to be an issue for them. Okay. Infest, Bambo able to dodge away from that one. Uh, meanwhile, the charge into the mid lane. Nine, he's going to go for this. They find the kill into DNZ, but 3-3 three, three, going to be torn to shreds. And J4, he is going to make it home. Does he actually live through this? It looks like the answer is no. Barely he does. Oh, he that was super close. I guess it was only, what, level like two there? Yeah. If that was a higher level, that would have been a kill. Well, still pretty slow game right now. If they can provide, if they can protect this tower, I think this is a really big thing for uh, Hellraisers because this is an exorcism committed. Yeah. About to run out. Ambo has to be a little careful though. He has RP if he's able to get the mana in time, but trying to bottle up through the arcane curse, a little bit frustrating. Needs to wait for it to wear off. Can go for the bottle now, walking forward, wants to get the RP. They're able to miss on the hoof stomp. Can he get the RP skewer combo? Doesn't look like they want to go for it. I think it's too risky. He's too close to his dagger to want to risk it, so I think it's better for him to just back off, go back to farming, finish your finish your dagger. Him just like running around there though, it saved the tower. Yep. God, there's so many stacks right now. Look at this. There's another huge one here. This is like a five stack of ancients. Oh, I think he wants to just do it. All right, meanwhile, there's going to be a kill there. The centaur goes down. He did finish off his blink dagger, but he gets punished for it. And in the meantime, like you said, they're taking out the stack. He is net worth going to skyrocket as long as Kaiser doesn't die. He should be fine. All right, he's dying. <laughs> no, he's fine. Yeah, he's going to go shrine up real quick. Probably a good call. Man. I forgot about the other ancient stack so much. Yeah, they are. There's a ton of farm on for this PA to get. I think she already cleared out one of the other stacks that was going on over there on the medium camp. So she is going to be able to have a very quick deso. Mask of Madness deso on PA and like probably what the 15 minute marker somewhere around there. Uh, yeah, probably at this rate. One more stack to farm. Yeah, I think you're right. That is pretty scary, because I don't think anyone could survive that kind of damage yeah. at this stage of the game. Jeez. Oh, and you got the help of the Jakiro slow. Yeah. Ice path there as well. Oh, this feels good. Couple crits, why not? Kaiser farming it up, getting about two levels off of this also, and sharing that with J4. Well, there's one of the Mithril Hammers. There. Some things never change. <laughs> 
Blink Dagger is now up on Magnus. Gonna have to watch where he goes with this. I think they need to make something happen before the Silencer picks up his level 6. He's about to get it, too. Well, the other thing is Bambo has an Arcane Rune, so if they go... I mean, obviously, you'd love to be able to wait for the Deso, but it's also really good timing with the Arcane Rune. They don't get that. I, I, don't even, I don't even think they need the Deso. I think if they have more than enough damage. Yeah. But I don't think you want to TP everyone up there, especially since Babo is on cooldown right now. So yeah. pushing the mid lane, probably the safer choice. Hopefully you probably want to uh, have someone TP in to defend and then you just get a quick pickoff. All right. Five heroes grouping up together there. Kaiser's still farming away about a thousand gold from finishing this. A little bit less than that now with the tower going down and... They're getting ready to push for the tier two as well. If, I mean, they're gonna force a response from Penta here. They're saving the exorcism though. Bottom lane, TP's coming in. I think that they're expecting them to move in for the pressure onto the tier one in the bottom lane next. So Hellraiser's looking for a fight. And Radiant expecting a Roche play. But it's gonna be RMN caught. He has global oh, available. Does he want to use it right now? This is a really bad play. If they all TP into this, they're into the ice pad. There's going to be the catch. No, it's not enough. The RP doesn't come out. The silence is there onto Magnus. Bamboo goes down. It still might be salvageable, though. If they can bring down nine in time, they're all on top of him. He gets torn to shreds. Boogie is going to go down here as well, I believe. Three dead already, even without an RP. That is terrifying. Wow. That was... I think the biggest thing about that team fight was the fact that your silencer went down without getting off the global silence, and because of that, the fight was just that much harder, and like you said, that was without an RP. Oh god, they find DNC too, so it's a full team wipe. And a tier 1 tower again gonna fall. Kaiser has the Deso flying out to him right now, and next item is gonna be a BKB. Hellraisers, they're gonna really snowball from this. Yeah, I think so too. This, I think right now the position they're in kind of allows them to just do whatever they want. And, you know, there's a tier one top and then there's a Roshan. And it's just feeling like, you know, whatever they want to take it's uh, on, their, on their list is kind of free for them to take. Yeah, this I is... suppose they still have to be a little scared of the global, but I mean, no echo for 70. And I... I mean, you look at, like, every metric of how this PA is doing right now. Level 13 highest in the game, 3,000 net worth ahead of the Life Stealer, who is trying to save up money for Radiant. So really, it's like he has 2,000 net worth because he's got 4,000 of it in the bank. I uh, I don't know about this. And now they hook in on the DNC. I, if they don't do something quickly, this game is just over. Well, and they're going to go for the Roshan. About to go down as well. And Roche is dead. So not only is he the highest level and the most farm, he's also got an Aegis. Yeah, he is not afraid of anything. Daring them to come at him. That being said, if somehow Penta could find a way to burn through this Aegis, it would be big in RMN. Can't quite get the bird drop. Boogie's still scouting this, but he might just need to cut creep waves or something. BKB, the next pickup for the Phantom Assassin, and I mean, once she has a BKB... Oh, DNZ is oh, dead man, again. get caught again. Well, they oh, use it. They oh, wow. Affirmative from Milan. He's feeling good about himself. It's a 6,000 net worth lead at 17 minutes. I honestly think this game is, like, very close to just almost being over. I don't well, know what you can do. I mean, it's a big... EXP and net worth gap right now, but you do still have a, a global. Like you, they definitely have good team fight going on for them right now, but they need to wait for their their moment. I, I don't know if they can fight the the ages. They might have to wait for it. I, I don't know if Hellraiser didn't give them that opportunity. To be honest, they're walking forward and hitting the tier three tower, and it is dropping very very quickly. These are level two birds. PA with the Deso, they pop the fortification. Still walking forward and taking it down. And like you said, they need to wait for their timing, but it's coming far too late and it's a tier three tower at 18 minutes. 
Are they going to continue? I don't see why not. They're smoked up here. Boogie is in the area. They have Echo Slam now. But no Blink Dagger. Oh, there's the four staff in the Blink Away. Boogie. Ooh. Got an illusion. Got him. All right, they want to make their they want to make their move right now. They we have an infest. Oh man, I don't know. They have the radiance done as well. The smoke. Time to go. Where are they gonna find? If they can get Kaiser, Kaiser is down here bottom. But then again, if you jump the Aegis carrier and you take him down, what happens afterwards? I don't think they can go on him. I think the rest of the team is going to be sitting behind him. Uh-oh, if Earthshaker gets caught here, this is going to be so bad for them. All right, Global comes out. They're all silenced, but they can't do anything with it. Exorcism is also out there. PA going to be brought down. So that's the Aegis. Milan, oh, four staff to the high ground. He gets taken out by the neutral. Oh, no. And now nine. He's left completely alone. They're going to turn around onto him. The RP only onto one. Doesn't matter. Boogie, he gets an initiation on a PA. PA's brought low. If they can manage to bring PA down, it'd be big. But DNZ, he ends up falling to Kaiser as well. They're going to chase this down. Oliver, slow division. 800 damage dealt. And a double for PA. She has her BKB flying out to her now. Steven, this is looking real bad. Yeah, I agree with you. <laughs> It was a six k. It was a six k net worth lead just a couple minutes ago, and now they brought it up to ten thousand net worth. Their their lead is just a little too much for Penta to deal with right now. I don't know if it's the best idea to force these five on five engagements. Maybe they thought, you know, with the help of the Radiance, you know, we might have enough to take these fights, but clearly not the case. This Phantom Assassin. Is oh, just a little too God. Oh, oh God! Oh God! It's all really gone bad. wrong. Nine. All right, well, he's going to try and get the Spirit Siphon. He gets pushed back by the Cogs. He gets minus 10 armor when PA hits him because of that talent. And Well, the chase is continuing. They have the Ice Path down. He can rage when he comes out of there. Immediately pops BKB, oh, turns to fight. Doesn't care about anything. They take down the barracks. No buybacks. GG wow, is called. 21 minutes. Wow, that was... <laughs> Quite a roller coaster of a of a game. It, it was just your standard game up until 10 minutes, 15 minutes or so, and then straight downhill for Penta Esports. That I don't I don't know if a Radiance Life Stealer is enough to deal with this PA. The PA Magnus into double gigantic ancient stacks was a little too much for them to handle. I feel. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, PA, like you said, just got those two stacks. I mean, look at the damage totals. You know, it's. You, you did a lot on DP, but it was just... Uh, the game was so short. Um, I don't know. She had double they, the... They weren't, able to get, they weren't able to get anything going for them. You know, you have the, the global, you have the Earthshaker, you have the, the Centaur. There's a lot of initiation, right? But then the game ended so fast, not a single person had what they needed to, to yeah. take these engagements. The only person was initiation was Boogie, and honestly, Centaur is not enough when it comes to initiation uh, in a game like this. Like, you need that, you know, Blink Echo, something that quick. Right. You need a, a Blink Echo Global, and then that's where your Centaur comes in. You kind of follow up on the on the Disables, and your Life Stealer starts hitting people throughout the Global. For sure. Well, we have one more game, potentially two, depending upon how Penta end up responding to this. But 4-17, to 17, and it felt like it could have been even more intense, but... Uh, we'll be back in a little bit. Game number two right around the corner. Self-Lyrical as well as Aos and you two casters for this. See you guys then.